So hello everyone. Today I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step guide to create a painting from a poem which either you can write or you can just find a poem and take yourself through these steps. So the poem that I chose, first of all the inspiration for the poem was doing a 30-day positive thinking exercise where I tried to catch every thought that I had in my head and if it was negative thought then to erase it and over time this did change my emotional environment and it was it was very joyous a joyous time and I highly recommend it so from that I wrote this poem and then from here we'll see where I go with the poem. So tending life's vibrational garden, though I plow through rich emotional ether, striking gold in summer's end blooms, I see once vibrant elements die back before I fall. Though I accept the darkness and unforgiving sleet of winter wrapped about my soul, I know its role to highlight the measure of how bright green my thumb of life can be. I laughingly summon quintessence from cracked, parched riverbeds at my whim. I remain ever vigilant in my vibrational garden as the stamens of high resonance inevitably conjure the honey in advance of the bee. So that's the poem. And then the next step is to go into a deep meditation from which you, in which you dream and run the lines of the poem through in your head and conjure up images and imagery and sketch them out so that you have something to go on to take to your canvas. And in this case, my sketches ended up incorporating uh, the seasons and I decided on a long thin canvas which would be landscape a vertical canvas is portrait and I've got my rough sketches here I don't really know where to put the woman the woman is me or represents me it doesn't look like me but all my ideas are churning in my head I have visions of abundance from my vibrational garden so I start sketching in the shell and I'm looking at creating a sign of infinity because I feel that creativity is infinite and I love the shape of the Fibonacci spiral I love using that in my work and as I sketch in the, the sign of infinity I realize the end of the sign of, of infinity can become a cornucopia. So this is where I'm allowing the painting to start beginning to paint itself because now I'm really tuned in and I'm painting and I'm in that other world where you lose time as you sketch away and I put the storm in but to me it doesn't really show the sleet of winter and it's a little harsh. So I think I'm going to paint that back a little, but I'm very happy with my shell because that represents my green thumb of life. And I don't want to put a thumb in there because it's like an emoji. Anyway, I start putting in the autumn leaves on the arc of the infinity symbol. And here's showing a little bit of detail, um, just softening back the storm a bit and merging the horizon with the, with the distance because when you merge the horizon it does create distance just a little tip on the side so um, these may be the details of my painting but I want you to just see it as an example of when you paint your painting and how, how it can change and evolve as you go and you keep referring back to your poem. So now here I'm sort of sketching in the woman and 
I found a beautiful place for her on the cornucopia and I absolutely do not like her at all the way I've painted her in but just to show you that you can paint things in that you're not happy with and you can just paint away and just always know that you can change anything because paint dries and you can paint over it. So here it's, she's just sketched in super rough, it's not proportionate, it's not perfect, but at least she's a placeholder and I know where she's going to be. Then I start putting in the icicles and the cornucopia fruits and start filling them in and as you go you know if you're painting an orange become an orange if you're painting the ocean become the waves lose yourself in your painting and here this you can see the storm is very severe in the background and I'm not liking the feeling of that and here's some details of the fall leaves and soon the moss will turn to icicles which is a line in the poem referring to the seasons. And here's some really close up, you can see really close the weave and weft of the canvas. And I'm beginning to put the moss in and the painting is beginning to really take shape. And then I go back to my shell and start putting in the details. I'm starting to see a pattern in it. And now you can see the composition is really balanced. A lot of the fruit has been painted in. The cracked parched earth on the bottom right is in. And again, here's a lot of detail and it shows the sharp icicles and I'm not liking that either. Um, it looks too sharp and severe. Here's a real detail of the background distant ice caps beyond the cornucopia and then I'm starting to really put in my sky and start sketching in a little bit of um, plants and things that are going to link the two circles together. I've started putting some texture in on my cornucopia but I don't like it very much and <clears throat> here is my waves coming to the shore a really another close-up because I just want you to see how rough you can be in the beginning when you're sketching your painting in because as long as you wait for it to dry you can always change it and this takes a lot of pressure off because people often stand back from their painting and they say oh well I don't like it and then they never finish it but I say to you just press on there's gonna be things that you don't like just be patient, let your imagination get carried away. And here you can see I have drawn out the composition. It's a symmetrical composition and very balanced. And composition is a very, very important part of your painting. You might be thinking, you know, I'm painting a poem and it doesn't matter, but it really, really does. So you have to think long and hard on your composition and also color has a lot to do with composition as well. You need your color balanced. If you're doing a balanced composition, you need to balance the color with it as well so that it harmonizes with everything. And as you can see, I have both sides of the canvas have blue sky in the corner, which is how I'm doing one little thing to balance it out. And then I'm, I keep working on my woman. I'm, I'm still not happy with her. I'm not happy with her position. She doesn't look comfortable. But she does look happy and I'm very pleased with my flowers coming over the arch of the infinity sign. And here I'm getting deeper and deeper into the finishing touches, linking one side of the painting to the other with the plants. And then here you can see I've decided the woman is comfortable and she's dark in contrast because her weight needed to counteract the weight of the shell on the other side. And here I finally linked up the infinity symbol with an ivy creeping over the shell. 
And then I've given my woman a little blanket to sit on because she looked a little bit cold and lonely out there. And again, putting in more and more details as I go. And the crack in the shell represents, uh, Leonard Cohen said that there is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. So there's more close up detail of the center of the painting, which is very color balanced. And then the final finishing touches to the pattern and the feeling of the shell. And I'm very, I'm very happy with it right now, but I, I'm still not happy with the storm in the back and it doesn't even look like the sleet of winter. So I'm thinking I might get rid of it. But at the same time, I'm thinking this is all about vibrational en energy. And I haven't really showed any sort of vibrational energy in the painting. So this is going to be my greatest challenge now at the end is to show that vibrational energy, which I do by counteracting it with the shape of the shell in the form of energy lines. Um, I flip the spiral and put it behind the woman. And then I finally end up almost getting rid of the storm altogether because it made it too busy and now I'm very very happy with my po my painting of my poem so I hope this helped you and thanks a lot for listening and if you have any questions or, or anything please leave them down below and I'll be happy to get back to you thanks a lot bye <laughs>